technology and teamwork, making the streets of Chicago safer. I'm Peter Carl, and this is Chicago Crime Watch. Up next on Crime Watch, a group of high school students want to spread the word. Being kind to animals and being kind to people can lead to safer communities. And they're taking that message on the road. It's after 9 a.m. on a Thursday morning. Students from Walter Payton College Prep High School arrive at Garrett Morgan Elementary School on the city's south side. Their mission? Teaching youngsters how to treat animals humanely. Sixth grade is also upstairs, room 301, you guys. The students get their room assignments and last-minute instructions from Cynthia Bathurst, principal director of Safe Humane Chicago. They spend a little time saying hello to the dogs and handlers, and they get a word of encouragement from 6th District Commander Eddie Johnson. I appreciate what you all are doing. Keep the good work up, and, and I'm sure these kids will get a big kick as well as an educational experience from the things that you are providing for them today. So thank you. And with that, the students take off to begin their lessons. We are here today to talk to you a little bit about how to be kind to animals and how to act in response to animals. The program is called Young Leaders for Safe Humane Chicago. It's a partnership between Safe Humane Chicago, a community-wide alliance that fights violence against animals, and Walter Payton College Prep. It started two years ago as part of a seminar program at the high school. Our motto at Walter Payton is we nurture leaders. And I thought, well, I'm going to start a leadership program. They developed a curriculum to talk about how to care for dogs, how to be safe around dogs, about dog fighting and animal abuse, and how we all work together as a community. So once a week, the Peyton students visit an elementary school in the city. They try to go to schools in high crime areas to show that everyone should care about having safe, humane neighborhoods. You want to make sure the dog has a collar and a leash, and you want to check that there is an owner. And um, once you see that they're there, uh, you want to approach slowly and ask the owner if you can pet the dog. So, uh, closer, can I please pet this dog? Sure. And once he says yes, um, you want to extend the back of your hand to the dog. And the reason you the young students are taught the proper way to approach and pet a dog. After the demonstration, everyone who wants to can safely pet the dogs. Dog teams and handlers accompany the Peyton group on their school visits. The kids were just totally excited just to see the animals and then the message that they got as to why the animals were here because of uh, this community is a, a great community, but uh, I like to bring things here that I don't think that they would ordinarily get a chance to, to experience. What we're gonna talk to you about is, um, do you think that dogs want to do dog fighting? No. One critical topic covered, cruelty to animals and dog fighting. They talk about the dangers and why it's important to report dog fighting if the kids see it. If any of you guys see a dog fight happening or see someone being cruel to animals, what would you do? I would uh, go in the house, I would go far away from the fight, go in the house and call 911. The message about cruelty to animals and dog fighting got through loud and clear to the young audience. I learned that it's, it's not good to um, have dog fights. And is, I learned that is better things that you could do with do with dogs. The dog can care. They don't care about the dog. They just care about the money and what happens. The dog is actually the victim here, because some dogs actually die in them. I think it's wrong. I think it's a wonderful experience for the the younger kids to actually be involved and interact with the older kids in terms of what to do and what not to do if you're approached by animals, and also. The fact that they, they give them a, uh, an education in um, animal abuse. How do you do it? Okay, all of you. All of you. From showing the students how to curl up like a rock if they're ever attacked by a dog, to discussing kindness, compassion, and responsible pet care, the young leaders feel their message is making a difference in the lives of youngsters throughout Chicago. I feel like we are teaching them new things that they didn't know before, and at least when we talk to them, they say that, like, that they're shocked by a lot of the information we give them and that they want to, you know, be kinder to animals in the future. Kids are the future, so, I mean, it's good to start them out young and then they can pass it on to their friends and just get the awareness out. 
If they see anything going wrong with animals at all, that they can be a part in making that situation better for them. We're trying to help the community, you know, we're trying to help the animals, we're trying to spread the word and make it more known about dog fighting so that we can prevent it. And I just think it's a good message for young people so that we can change the next generation. There are 30 students in the Young Leaders for Safe Humane program with a long waiting list trying to get in. I'll have kids who start the program and are very shy but really love animals and they want to do something to stop violence in the city and do something really positive, take a positive approach to it. And they become leaders. They really start to shine. It's teenagers saying this is the way we want our communities to be. This is how being kind to animals and being kind to each other are all about the same thing. So to do this program and to have them interact safely with animals actually sets the stage for better things later on in life. If you see a dog fight in progress or animals being treated cruelly, call 911. For more information on Safe Humane Chicago, call 312-409-4790. Going bald for a good cause. This was the recent scene at the Chicago Police Department's training academy. It's beautiful. <laughs> a scene also playing out at several other police facilities. The event is called St. Baldrick's, a fundraiser for childhood cancer research in which participants collect donations for shaving their head. Or in this case, a girl's long hair was cut to become a wig for a young chemo patient. Um, this is the first time I was cutting my hair and I'm donating it to St. Baldrick's. It's for the kids with cancer. I feel happy. I know I'm doing the right thing. More than 250 Chicago police officers participated in this year's event, which is expected to raise around $100,000. As one smooth scalp participant said, in a few weeks, it'll feel like the military. And in a month, it'll be a crew cut. That's it from the Crime Watch News Team. I'm Peter Carl. Thank you for watching.